it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> okay, hands up. Who of you in this room is afraid of snakes? <laughs> I, I'll be honest, more, 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 more. Okay, and who of you, especially in the front rows here, gets somehow uncomfortable with this snake catching barrel, which I place here on stage with me? Okay, rest assured, I did not bring a snake to this TED Talk. <laughs> this is an empty barrel, 150 kwacha kamwala. <laughs> but your fear of snakes is justified by the fact that Africa is home to some of the most deadliest, deadliest snakes in the world. Uh, we have this one, the puff feather, very, very well known. Infamous is the black mamba, and we have cobras around, and many more. Now today, what I would like to do, uh, and, and, and let me not forget that in Africa we have a saying, the only good snake is a dead snake. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Uh, we are in agreement, eh? Okay. But what I would like to do today is to slightly, slightly reduce your fear of snakes by giving you some facts and applying common sense. But first I would like to give you some background information. Because in 2017, the World Health Organization has identified snake bites as a highest priority neglected tropical disease. And this was based on the following data. Worldwide, five and a half million people get bitten by snake each year. Five and a half million. Out of which about 50% contain envenomation. That means that the snake has injected venom into its victim. That's a lot of a lot of people and a lot of snake bites. But let's bring in some perspective. Because 100,000 people each year worldwide die from snake bites. And the perspective is this. If you take that number and compare it to the 5.5 million bite victims, we're talking about 2% only. If you reverse that, it automatically leads to the conclusion that if you get bitten by a snake, you have 98% chance of survival. Now, let's bring in even more perspective. Mosquitoes. <laughs> I haven't even said what I was going to say. <laughs> but you already get the point, because mosquitoes worldwide kill over a million people each year. Yet somehow it is the snake that has the bad reputation, and it is the snake that is being seen as a representative of evil. Now, I've lived in Zambia for over eight years, and in that period, I've been removing snakes for people from their homes, from their gardens, from their yards, from their workplaces. I've given sensitization talks in communities, neighborhood groups, at schools. I've been on radio, I've been on TV, and all these interactions have learned, have taught me a couple of things. And that is that the deeply instilled fear in Africa for snakes, the deeply instilled fear, is to a large extent based on misinformation and misconceptions. And I would like to play out one of those, an example of misinformation for you. And imagine I'm getting a phone call and I'm answering it. Hello, this is Marcel. Hello, I'm Mr. Marcel. Uh, this is Mrs. Banda. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Banda, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> We're very polite people in Zambia. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What can I do for you, Mrs. Banda? I think I have a deadly snake in my house. <laughs> okay, I'll be right on, on my way to, to remove it for you, but can I ask you, why, why are you whispering to me? <laughs> because snakes don't have external ears, and they can't hear what we're saying. Now this, of course, is just a very small example, but today what I would like to do is address three of the main misconceptions which have led to the bad reputation of snakes, especially in Africa. Misconception number one is that snakes are evil and they're out to kill human beings. There's nothing funny about that. Now, let's, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I get that, I get that. I mean, many people in Africa, and I'm pretty sure many of you, you here, no, at least one person has either been bitten by a snake or even killed by a snake. Huh? Secondly, 
in most of the African folklore, the snake is always depicted as a representative of evil. Thirdly, with the coming of Christianity and the Bible on this continent, and you guess it, the reputation of the snake has further been harmed. Yeah? However, let me counter that with some facts. Snakes are cold-blooded creatures, like other red parasites. And it means that for their energy buildup in their body, they rely on external sources, be it the sun, direct sunlight, or a heated up surface like the road. They can't generate their own en en energy. And it automatically leads to the conclusion that for snakes, energy is a very precious resource. And it's meant to be used for reproductive purposes and for food, stores in food. And they will not want to waste any of that energy. Second, second fact. Snakes can't bite off pieces of their prey. They have to swallow their prey whole. And us, the human beings, are simply too large for the African snakes to be swallowed. So we are simply, that is the conclusion, not on the menu of snakes. <laughs> now if we put these two conclusions together, energy being a precious commodity to snakes which they don't want to waste, and us not being on the menu of snakes, there can't be any, any logical rationale to defend that snakes want to actively kill us. And in fact, it is that every time somebody was bitten by a snake, it was because the snake bit out of self-defense. It felt threatened. Either because we tried to kill it, or we simply be got too close to the snake without even being aware of it. Okay. Misconception number two is that snakes follow us and chase us. And you're laughing, but people believe this. And infamous in, the, in, 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 in this context is the black mamba, who is, be, who is said to be able to outrun a human being. Now, this is simply not the case. The maximum speed at which a mamba has been clocked is 12 miles per hour. And a human being can reach up to 20. And I'm very, very convinced that many of you here, when encountered with a snake, can run much, much faster than that. <laughs> But it is completely irrelevant whether they can or cannot outrun us. Because we have already established that we are not food for them. And they don't want to waste their energy on chasing us. And in fact, the only times when you would be able to see a snake coming towards you is because you have positioned yourself in between the snake and a potential hiding place. And that can be a hole in the ground, a crack in a wall or a crack in a tree, and even the dark shade under your vehicle. And I'm speaking from experience. Third misconception. When there is one snake, there must be more. And I get this question quite often. <laughs> Many people have asked me, when I come to collect a snake from their house, ah, Mr. Marcel, you have now caught this black neck spitting cobra, but there must be others around, like the babies, <laughs> or the husband or the wife. And you can hear the panic in their voice. <laughs> and it's not true, and there's two, two simple facts to back my statement, it's not true, uh, necessarily true up. First of all, snakes are solitary creatures. They only come together for mating purposes. And other options where you can see more snakes together is when a, ne a nest of snakes has just hatched, or whether there's a serious abundance of food and shelter. Other than that, you will not see more than one snake. There's no reason. Second of all, snakes are not territorial. If their basic needs are not fulfilled, they'll leave the area. And what are these basic needs? Because that is really important. Snakes need two things. Access to shelter, hiding places, and they need access to food. And like I said, if we deny them those, there will be no snakes. Now. I have now very simply, with some rationale and some facts, refuted these misconceptions. But I would like you to have more information from me, which will help you. And I would like to give you some tips on how you can avoid having snakes around, to a certain extent. And I would like to tell you what to do if you do encounter a snake. Yeah? 
Now, I've already said there are two main commodities the snake needs. Access to shelter, access to food. So we need to deny them those in our area of living. How do we do that? We need to keep our yards tidy and clean. That's all there's to it. Tidy. If we have a messed up yard, if we have building rubble lying around, rocks, bricks, corrugated sheets, um, branches, even leaf cuttings, have these piles of leaves which our gardeners are piling up, these are all excellent hiding places for snakes. So we need to get rid of those. Keep your yard tidy. Also, if you have big holes in the ground, cracks, cracks in your foundation, fill those up as well. Because these are hiding places for snakes. Cleanliness. Keep your yard clean. If we keep a dirty yard, where we have food rests lying around, we keep the rubbish outside, what do we do? We attract pests like mice, rats, cockroaches, but also other insects, which attract in turn frogs and toads. And all these are on the menu of snake, unlike human beings. <laughs> They're all on the menu of snake. So when you have a dirty, dirty yard, you attract those pests, you're attracting snakes as well. Keep your yard tidy, keep your yard clean. Finally, we'd like to make a sidestep and talk about snake repellents, because for sure many of you will have the question, ah, what about those snake repellents? There's no such thing. Unfortunately, the Alexander, uh, the Alexander Laboratory of the Wits University in South Africa has debunked the functionality of any snake repellent known to men so far. This includes certain plants you could plant uh, w which give off a smell that would repel snakes. Not true. It includes putting diesel and, and used oil in your yard. No, but people tell me that that works. It does not work. It's a pollution. That's an environmentalist clapping right there. Um, and there's even these purpose-made um, sprays with snake repellents. You can buy them in supermarkets all over Africa, including here in Lusaka. Rubbish, they don't work. It's a waste of your money. Keep your yard tidy, keep your yard clean. That's all you need to do. Now finally, if you do happen to stumble upon a snake, the moment you see the snake, imagine the barrel is the snake, you see the snake, and it hasn't bitten you yet, if you don't do anything, it won't bite you. That's one. Second of all, you stay calm. Mm -mm, I'm speaking the truth here, madame. <laughs> Second, stay calm and slowly move away. The moment you move away, you move yourself out of harm's way. So you become safe. Second of all, you take away the threat you, as a big person, are posing on that snake. So the snake will feel less afraid. There's some people I have to convince more after, in the break. <laughs> so the, peep, the, the snake will feel less afraid as well. And that means that it will slither off. And let's keep in mind that in Africa we have spitting snakes, like the spitting cobras. The basic rule is if you're four meters or more away from any snake in Africa, you're safe. Okay? So what do we do when we get home? We keep our yards clean and... Keep your yard clean and tidy. Thank you very much.